In this tutorial, we'll take a look at the functions of the Zoom and GPS lock toolbar and the various settings and options. We're also going to look at the speed panel. So these are the two common map tools that in the Traveller app you can tweak in settings to get a custom feel that you're comfortable with. First is the toolbar itself. This is a fixed vertical toolbar with multiple icons. By default, this toolbar appears on the left of the map screen, but you have the option to change it to the right. You do this in settings. Now let's look at the icons in the toolbar. At the top is 3D. When you use 3D, you can change the pitch angle of the map view. Whilst it's a slight distortion, it can be handy to see more of what's ahead. When you tap to turn on the 3D, the map will use the display mode value as per the settings. The default is 45, which is the degree angle of pitch, but you can adjust this value here in settings. Next is the GPS lock. By default, the icon here is an arrow head. When the icon is activated, the arrow color is orange. This means the map screen is locked onto your current position. So GPS lock is on. If you tap this icon, you can turn off the GPS lock so you can move around the map. The icon will then be white. In the centre of the map, you'll then see the crosshairs tool. If you use the pin, it will record a marker at the position of the crosshairs. Now, let's look at the settings that you can use to change or customise how the GPS lock works. By default, as I just demonstrated, to disable the GPS lock, you tap it. That's manual. However, you can change the disable feature to auto. Here's a demonstration. Here the GPS lock is on and in settings, as per the default, the GPS disable mode is manual. You can see the blue arrow on the map shows my current location. But if I touch the map screen and try to look at another area on the map, it will eventually snap back to show my current position. That's because I didn't disable the GPS lock manually. So now let's try this again. On the map screen, I manually tap the GPS lock icon to disable it. And now I'm able to pan around the map anywhere I like, seeing the crosshairs and it won't snap back to my current position. So the alternative is to go into settings, go to disable GPS lock and change it to automatic. Now what this does is every time you touch the map and move your finger around to look at other areas, it automatically disables the GPS lock. Please just remember that if you do this, however, to turn the GPS lock back on to show your current position in the center of the map, you'll have to manually turn on the GPS by tapping that icon in the GPS lock toolbar itself, which you see on the map screen. So far, my demonstrations have been using the default GPS lock mode, which is track up. Let's see a demonstration. When you're driving with the track up mode, the blue arrow showing your current position is always constant. The arrow points up. Many people prefer this mode for the simplicity of knowing change of direction. For example, left is left, right is right. You might prefer to change this setting to north up. This is done in settings. Here's a demonstration. Notice when you change to north up mode, the icon in the GPS lock toolbar changes, no longer the arrow, but you see the circular compass icon. In north up mode, the map is always oriented with north at the top. So the blue arrow showing your current position points in the direction you are traveling. Here I'm driving in a southerly direction and here I'm driving the same road in a northerly direction before turning towards the east and then again tracking towards the north. Each time the blue arrow is showing the change of direction, however the map is not rotating because north will always be at the top of the map. You can also use the plus or the minus uh, symbols on the toolbar to adjust the zoom. So plus means increasing and zooming in. You can also use the pinch zoom method, just using your fingers and adjusting uh, in and out with the pinch of your finger on the touch screen. 
Now let's look at the speed panel. In settings, you can customize the metrics that you want to appear. Speed is always included if you choose to have the speed panel visible, but you also have other options for metrics such as heading, altitude, and position. If you select position, you can actually change the format used, uh, but that's another setting further up, so have a look for that above. But let me show you the options with the speed panel layout. There are two layout options, horizontal or vertical. Personally, I like when I'm driving around suburbia just to see speed and heading, so I put it into vertical. And because I use a headset in the vehicle, I also like the toolbar position on the right. So with all the settings I've shown you so far, that's how you can customise the layout of your map screen to suit the different device you're using or the application. It's quite simple just to go in and out and customise that as often as you need. Anything that you set in settings will be remembered for every future time that you open the app. And these are the defaults. So you can just go in and change settings when your circumstances change. So the idea is just to keep it for um, the majority of use that you will use and then you won't have to keep adjusting. Another option you have with the speed panel is to customise what actual size you want that panel. Now this is particularly handy because different devices have different screen resolution. And so although we've designed this to use the normal setting, um, that's depending on the screen resolution of your device. And if it doesn't suit you, just go in here and adjust the setting. So tiny, small, medium, normal, large, huge. Or of course, you could turn it off altogether. And here you can see I've got the speed panel in vertical and I have just two metrics, speed and heading. I also have the GPS toolbar sitting on the right hand side and I've repositioned the speed panel. So I'll show you how to do that now. Moving the position of the speed panel is very easy. You press and hold until you see it shake and you'll get a bit of a red outline around it. While it's like that, while it's got the red, you simply keep your finger on the box and drag it across the screen. When you release it, the red outline goes away and that's where you're going to drop it. Now, double tap of the speed panel will minimize it and you're left with a plus on the screen. Simply tap the plus to reopen it to full size again. And it's as simple as that. Now, there's one last thing to talk about with the speed panel. The speed panel has two default locations where it will appear on your screen. These are set up by default in the app and they're designed so that when you use your device in portrait mode versus landscape mode, when you turn your device around, that the speed panel will automatically reposition to the right location to be in the center um, at the bottom, which is the default. But if you go in and you change the default position by moving that speed panel to your desired custom location on the screen, when you go to change the orientation, you may find that the speed panel is out of sight. And this is how you fix it. You go into settings and you scroll all the way to the bottom where you'll see app resets and you select the first one, which will enable you to reset the speed panel back to its default location. So then when you go back into the app, turn your device to the second direction that you were trying to set and customize the position for that orientation and then turn it back the other direction and then set it for that direction. Once you've changed your defaults, then the speed panel will remember those locations when you turn it. So we've reached the end of what we were going to discuss in this tutorial, looking at zoom and GPS lock toolbar and the speed panel. Remember, if you're after any more information about either these two features or anything else in using the app, make sure you go into the user manual and that's where most of this information can be found in written format together with further screenshots. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for further editions of our video tutorial series.